right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the kind invitation. I'm happy to be here on behalf of the Ministry of Transport and Digital Infrastructure. I'm here to inform you about the M Cloud and the M Fund. The title is Data as the Fuel for Intelligent Mobility. My presentation will be delivered in two parts. First of all, I'm going to talk about the M Fund and then about the M Cloud. The M Fund is particularly interesting because it can get 1 million euros for infrastructure, and the M Cloud helps you to make the data infrastructure available with within an uncomplicated and free of charge, you can get access to open data. I'm here on behalf of the DG25 Open Data and M Found, and you will realize several times that we talk about different subject matters. So if I leave out some of the special details because I'm not an IT expert, I'm happily taking your questions home with me and I will find somebody in the ministry who is willing and able to answer it. When you think about data and those who possess data, it's not far French to say that in the ministries, in the public authorities, in the municipalities and cities, there is a whole lot of information available gathered for various different types. This is where they are stored and processed. But the question is, what can we do with the data? How can the mobility be enriched and the tourism sector be enriched? How can travel be made easier with the help of this data? And how can social coexistence be made easier with the help of data? Just look at our daily routines. Don't you think that cars should know about the weather report? Shouldn't they have sensors in order to be able to know what the rush hour situation will be like, what the weather will be like, and what the trip will be like no matter where you go? Now, with XC3 other associations, the weather authorities are connected to the Ministry of Transport, and we really store a lot of data forecasts. But the question is, how can we make the data available for others to be able to use it in a targeted and specialized approach? Another question is, couldn't traffic hour be controlled automatically? We all know about the problem with navigation. Google Maps sometimes shows you that there might be a congestion or a traffic jam. But Google only tells you about the traffic jam when it happens. But you know, this construction site or whatever it might be will be planned ahead. And a municipality or a public authority will be in charge of that construction site before Google knows that a bridge will be closed. The public authority knows about it. Now, how can we make this data available before the first traffic jam will occur? So we try to make different traffic users use these data in an efficient and efficient manner. Another question is, can airplanes use data instead of kerosene? In the field of aviation, there is a tremendous trend towards digitization, and the Ministry of Transport also has a lot of, has a lot of data available about airlines and air transportation. How can this data be made available in order to make this usable for air carriers. Now here the idea was that the ministry and you as tour operators can use Mobility 4.0 more and more, which is a close connection between technology and infrastructure for mobility services and mobility offers in a completely new fashion. And what is it all about basically? The data are available. Data are tax funded and data are available. The ministry as such and the public authorities hardly ever use these data economical, but they are levied for a particular service. The Federal Transportation Office, the Federal Railway and Federal Highway Authority, many other authorities collect data but don't use them in an economical fashion, although other players could really get an extra benefit by using this data. The question is, how can these data be made available for third party, for the business community, in order for these to be able to develop new business concepts and new solutions and process these data accordingly? The cooperation with established players always conjures up established problems. We try to come up with new solutions, and we bank on new and creative and innovative players, and we want to promote them as best as we can. But normally, startups and new business setups 
I'm not really conventional with the work of ministries and public authorities, so we don't really match all that well. This is why the ministry came up with a new program with which these processes are supposed to be facilitated. Let me briefly inform you about the program, and the, at the end of my presentation, you might ask questions if you wish. Well, in the center, there is the research initiative called M Fund, Modernity Fund. A hundred million euros can be made available for particular calls for particular subject matters. As a new startup, you can apply for that as a tour operator, as an app provider, as a tourism agency in order to deal with certain social questions. You are supposed to offer a solution for the first time, or you can maybe also refine data and use data that is being made available, which are being made available to you. But this does not suffice. Especially young new startups always tell us that money alone doesn't make us come full circle, but we need interfaces, services, and consultation in order to get a foot in the door. Apart from the promotion of the projects, there are two more formats, which is called competition formats and networking formats. Now, he will try to establish certain events which help to create interfaces between the public authorities and the startups and the service providers. And we also want to have certain tournaments or competition in order to find out whether certain concepts will be used in the market. So we have certain roadshows where we contact business startups, we have bar camps, we have hackathons. We organize a lot of different events and seminars, which are quite unusual for the ministry, and in particular, the Ministry of Transportation during the first hackathon, a lot of people came together from all different regions of the Federal Republic. And the question was, what do people do 24 hours long in the ministry? A hackathon lasts 24 hours, but normally we close at 8 p.m. How is this going to work? But it is our objective to listen to new people who are telling us, well, you've got data for a particular purpose. We are startups. We as tour operators need this data because we want to process it, because we want to add extra value and extra service to our clients. How can we make these data available with the help of which interfaces and with the help of these events we try to make this possible? We have a database, the M Cloud, but I will talk about this in the second part of my presentation. The M Cloud is supposed to ensure that the data collected by the authorities used by our startups can be made available in a particular form. On a particular database, the information can be retrieved from the public authorities and the new startups as well. There are more and more authorities which tell us this open data idea is wonderful, but our own infrastructure would be too expensive. So the German railway company makes data available about the railway routes, about the itinerary. There are a lot of proactive players around in Germany, such as the BVG, the Berlin Railway Company, which makes open data available as well. So there are a lot of open data portals for the city of Frankfurt, for the city of Berlin, and there are also satellite-based databases which make data available. As a normal user, you cannot always see this data in a standard format. A database based on satellites gives you terabyte full sets of data which have to be broken down to the nitty gritty. But the M Cloud makes you geothermal or ter temperature weather based information available without much further ado. But we're just about to set up the database. It doesn't work like a Google search engine, you know, where you just type in one word and the search is run by Google. No, it's a rather comprehensive set of information that is needed for you to be able to retrieve the information that you need. But these data are free of charge, easily available, and you can use them for whichever purpose you want. But later on, I'm going to give you some examples. The organizational setup of such a program is set up by the ministry, but the ministry can't do it alone. So if we've got lots of service providers, Scholz and Friends, the VDO, the TÜV Rheinland, providing different services to us for you to be able to get access to the information you need and use the program as effectively and efficiently as possible. So NGOs and association with all us tell us you've got too many data, make them available to the general public are our partners. These are startups and very well established companies which tell us we've got an established idea. Now the technology is available. If you want to cooperate with us, that's fine. But it's also scholars and university, Fraunhof, Max Plans, Helmholtz, 
different scholars and scientists support us, but also the public authorities and the municipalities. We all closely cooperate with each other. With this 100 million program, we cover three different areas, but I'll tell you about the obstacles later. First of all, point number one is how can you get access to the data? Which data sources do exist and how can the data be made usable? If you have specific ideas and solutions about this authority or that data set which is available here or there in order to be used in a particular sector in a special way, just submit an application file an application for these funds and then we can make state funds available for you to get started. So this is how you can get access to the data and set up the structures that you need. Data-based application, this is the very specific case. The data is available in the form that in which you need it, but now you want to set up a platform, a service or whatever it might be in order to create a new service. Here, with the help of these projects, we want to create extra value in the interests of your clients, and we make public data available for your particular new service. The third point is data governance. This is the legal or political framework under which we operate. Let me just give you an easy example. Everybody talks about drone technology. Each and everybody wants to use drones for traffic control or camera-related purposes, but there are a lot of framework conditions that are in the way. If you have a certain business segment where you say, well, technically speaking, it would be possible, but there are too many legal obstacles in our way, this would be the case where you can actually submit an application together with other players in the market. I want to find out what the opportunities are or what needs to be done in order to overcome the obstacles in the field of data privacy or data governance in order to be able to use these technologies. What are the legal obstacles which are in our way compared to other countries? Which is possible in Ukraine? What is possible here? Or what is not possible elsewhere? We want you to develop a business model that is appropriate. We put a very strong focus on the issues that we are in charge of, and that is mobility infrastructure, the digital society, but also demographic developments and the environment. You know, of course, also the other ministries have research programs in place. If you find out that you are more qualifying for other programs, look at the attractive programs that other ministries have to offer. And maybe this is where we'll find the most appropriate solutions. Now, which two, which are the two opportunities that exist? There's one possibility, and that is to apply for funds under category one. It's simple to file an application. You can be given up to 100,000 euros. You have to submit a concept of 50 page, 15 pages, which will be reviewed on a monthly basis. You've got a hotline available free of charge where you can get assistance and advice. And that is for the first chance to get a foot in the door. If you have a very specific idea without really knowing what to make of it, without knowing if it's economical, start off with a small idea apply for funds under category one and apply for 100,000 euros and then you can come back with a big idea one year later. So funds category one are not really complicated and you can apply for 100,000 euros for a period of up to 12 months. Here the qualifications are not really all that hard. Fund category number three applies to projects with a total amount of up to three million. This is rather comprehensive. A single person has great difficulties, great difficulties applying for a total fund of three million, but you can basically cover an entire service chain from the beginning to the very end. And if this is a convincing project, three million is not too much. You might also get support from a university, from a high school, somebody who can provide scientific assistance, especially in the field of data privacy. You might need the support and they get 100% funding. So find yourself an accompanied player with which you can easily cooperate and then fund number two might be the appropriate one for you. The applications here depend very much on cold. This is what we know from the media sector. We have pitches twice a year for these calls. So on a particular deadline, you can submit your application. Here the process takes a bit longer, but of course the funding is much higher. And state funds don't have to be paid back. You don't 
transfer shares, but you simply get the funding for a particular research project. And if it fails, you don't have to pay the money back. It's not a loan, not a credit. There are no interest rates to be paid. It's just a state subsidy, but it needs to be a research project with a particular objective. Let me give an, you an example. I can't give a carpenter money for producing carpets because this is nothing new in Germany. This is not research. This is not innovative. But a new technology, a new app can be supported because it's something new which the competitors have not yet produced. And these are the kind of ideas that we try to promote with the help of these programs. In a nutshell, of course, on the website, you can retrieve the slides in order to read it up. Fund number one is possible at any given point in time. Fund number two, up to three million deadline next summer. But go to the to Rhineland Consulting or get assistance from the founder. These are the service providers who've got the experts sitting on the phone who can really answer all your questions. Maggie, you give you one example. This is the project Edel. It has nothing to do with choosing, but it can be explained rather quickly. When you stop at a red traffic light as a car driver, you wonder wh why you have to stop. But the solution is rather simple. We have a system which is not networked, and that's the problem. But how can we organize the traffic lights in Germany for your car to be recognized? and for you to get a green light if you're the only one who stops. It's an example from transportation and logistics, but in the travel sector, you will probably have similar problems at the airport, at the gateway, at the harbor. No matter what problems you identify, where technical solutions could be made available, let us know about it. The second point is the so-called mCloud. That is the infrastructure behind the program. It's a database where we make our data available. In other countries, such as Estonia, a lot of progressive programs have already been developed. Countries such as Germany are large and complicated. Here, things take a lot longer, but this is where we can make more data available. The M Cloud started off with geodata. We had a lot of data about plots of land, waterways, coastal regions, mountains, and the like. But at some stage, all the data was put into one pool, and we said, well, this is what the citizens and the business community should use. But it was highly complicated, and this is why we created a platform which turned out to be an intelligent system. Now, or in one year or in five years from now, you will realize that the platform has really progressed rather quickly. And at some stage, the platform will work just like Google. You will just type in one word for which you look, and then the database will produce the information you retrieve. If you want to develop an app making all the mobility service providers of the city available, don't worry. Here in our database, you can find the information for Berlin-related tour operators or public local transportation without much further ado. This is a very important tool, but it's also important that the platform offers an interface that makes it possible for you to communicate with us. So you can send messages or requests to us without much further ado, and they make you say, well, this is where the data format is based, and you need information from a certain authority. We will forward your message, and we will try our utmost to make this data available to you. Let us look at the concept. On the one hand, as you can see, you are in the light blue bar as the general public, and we are shown in yellow with the 13 authorities we are cooperating with in the ministry. But we've got to advertise our MCLIDE, make this data available, forward it, make this data easily accessible. When somebody comes along with a certain user scenario and tells us, I need this data for this particular travel project, with the authorities, we can contact you immediately and Tell the authority what kind of information you need. So submit your request. Tell us what you know. It might be a solution that can be provided rather quickly, or it might take some time. But we will definitely give you feedback, and we will definitely let you know how quickly or how long it will take for the information to be made available. I spoke about two examples. First of all, it's the railway system of the Deutsche Railway Company data sets that nobody really thinks about. All the elevators and stations is information that is retrieved here. 
when you are constrained with regards to mobility, you don't really care whether the elevator has to be serviced or not, but you are simply annoyed when the elevator doesn't work and you're sitting in a wheelchair and don't, you don't know how to get up to the second floor. One solution might be that all the elevator-related information can be made available as open data, and whenever you go on a tour with disabled people or elderly people, you could check immediately which elevators work or which doesn't work, and then maybe you have to take a little detour in order to make the appropriate services available to your clients. These were two examples from the mCloud system, but on the website you will find additional examples and it continues to grow all the time. Now the federal government has various different platforms in different sections and a called upon all the European countries to make information available in the form of open data to its citizens. We have developed an open data solution, which is the mCloud, with which the information is made available free of charge. But we also have a B2B market, the mobility data market, that is. On the mCloud, you find data free of charge for different mobility applications. But the MDM is a platform with which solutions that you have to pay for and data sips from the area of traffic and transportation are made available. If you are a transport or logistics service provider, then the MDM might be the appropriate platform. I differentiate between the two because citizens are sometimes confused. Why do you have mCloud, MDM, all these different data portals? But we have different target groups. That's what we always explain. But you need to know that there are different data formats, different platforms for different target groups. If you need mobility services, go to the mCloud. If you want satellite data, go to cloud DM. And if you need road related data, go to MDM. But the databases are synchronized, so we always try to harmonize our data so the data is not are not redundant and always available. But if you run into problems, let us know. We will send us an email and we'll try to rectify it. Why do we do what we're doing with open data? The question, of course, is originally the data were made available by US citizens and companies. You paid for it, and we in the public authorities just gathered the data and collected it. But we want to make this data, these data available in a primary source, free of charge, because we hope that this will be of extra benefit to the companies and the citizens. But it's not all that easy to make data available. You will know all the ins and outs. Just look at your own company. Think of these data that you're going to make available free of charge for third parties. Well, there's data privacy, data security, confidentiality. Some pieces of information simply cannot be made available because you don't want your competitors to know. And at the end of the day, you end up with a limited set of data that you would like to make available. But you have a business model, you've got clients and certain objectives. We in the ministry are tax funded, and therefore we have to make these data available because they were already paid for by the citizens. The citizens already own them. But how can we? make sure that we still comply with data privacy regulations. Of course, the federal vehicle institution has all the data available about all the cars, car owners and the like. But we don't want to make the data available about the car owners, but only about the vehicles. What kind of vehicles are there on the roads? Which type? What about fuels consumption? This is where, you know, we have to walk the tightrope between open data and non-open data. And this is what we have to do with on a daily basis. But please, let us know if there are any problems and give us any recommendation. You're more than welcome. To us, it's important that these data are complete in a primary source. We want to be able to use the data in a timely fashion with easy access. These data need to be machine readable, especially for scalable services. We don't want you to adjust data sets manually, but we want you to be able to use an interface. You want you to read the data and retrieve it easily, and then you will get information from the railway company, from traffic users, from the ports, from um, stops on highways, whatever the target group will be. We want to make this information available to you as easy as possible. We want to use open status without making you having to pay for it. And we want to make information available on a long-term basis. 
and we want to update it on a regular basis because you need to be able to develop your business model on the basis of that. So this is where open data cannot be compared with other data that the citizens would like to have. I would like to have a graph or a PDF file. In certain cases, the platform will tell you, well, we can make the information available to you in certain data sets for you to be able to use it as quickly as possible for your intelligent learning systems to be able to use it on an ongoing basis. But if you have special problems or questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. There are many laws in place which are amended every year that we continue to work on, and sometimes it's difficult for the for the citizens to know what these laws are really covering. Let me just tell you what's currently happening in Europe and in Germany at a very rapid phase in the field of open data. And please, let me encourage you to stay tuned. Look up what's already happening in this regard. What opportunities do exist? Which kind of information is already available free of charge with which you can change your business model. Now I would like to give you the opportunity to ask questions or comment on mCloud and MDM and mFund. These are our contact details. If you want to get information about the mFund 100 million, feel free to contact me. Everything which is really technical should be answered by Dr. Götzke, my colleague. He can tell you everything about the data infrastructure and the data platform. He knows all the technical details and can also inform you about the interface. Are there any questions about the research program or about the database at the current moment in time? Well, I'll still be around at the booth outside. Thank you very much for your attention and have